probably neighboring on the wing. You can see they have a similar sort of emargination and notch pattern here. You can see this lobe out here. because the lead primary is taking all the strain and it will be the one that's flared at the highest. Then the next one is like that, that feather is just breaking through the air is making the transition of the, of the feather behind it a little easier and so on and so on and so on. So that's why when you see, if you see a condor, if anybody's watched a condor, you see them off in a distance like this. You never have this. The only time you have all the feathers straining up like this is a downstroke, like that. When they're in a static glide, a soar, it's like that. And so if you watch pheasants, when, when, uh, say if this peacock took off and it's flying straight away from you and it stopped flapping, started gliding, you, you have something like this. And the next feather is a little bit further down, a little bit further down. And what's going on is, what, what helps to facilitate that is that the reason for this up sweep and this down sweep is that these feathers are actually hooking onto each other. They're doing this. And if you were to take any of these feathers here, let's take it right here. Okay, these feathers have the same, it's not as well developed, but they have the same sort of shape that's going on. And when you put them in juxtaposition of how they occur on the wing, and then you try to draw them apart, you see they actually catch. You can, you can actually see them expanding, you can actually see them actually warping the rachis out of shape. And that's exactly what all the wing feathers do is they're going back on the wing. In most of the literature, they attribute this shape to just being in an airfoil. But I think in actuality, it's actually for this catching and gripping and holding to prevent air from just actually shooting up through the wing. Except for here. When you get out here, when you actually have the slotting going on, and the next feather that would be in line would have the slotting, would have the slotting migrate a little bit further down, then a little bit further down, a little bit further down. And if you try to pull those apart, you'd see they actually catch and bind. Now, what's also very interesting is if you get into things like falcons or eagles and stuff like this. I don't know if I have a good example over here. There's a lot of built, there's a lot of stored up surface area in feathers. When a feather is static, there is, you know, it's like they have, they, they'll take on a shape and they'll retain the shape. And this, this could be an actually kind of a neat project for a graduate student. It's a shake and bake project. But to try to calculate mathematically how much stored surface area is in a bird's wing feather. In other words, it's like if, if you do that again and you, and, you, and, you, and you find these things, you can see these feathers actually expand in size. And that they're actually, their surface area has increased. And, you'll, and it's, if you look at photographs of, say, birds in flight, especially like your birds of prey, you'll actually see where the feathers are. You can see this expansion going on, some interesting expansion going on in the feather surfaces themselves. In the case of swifts, I don't know if anybody in here watches swifts or anything like that, but sometimes when they're high up in the sky and they, they go into a soar, their wing will take on a very characteristic leaf-like shape. But if you look at birds, if you handle a dead bird, if you've ever skinned birds or anything like this, and you try to get that same exact shape by opening the wing, it's not it's it's, it's hard to understand why the wing take wing shape takes on these leaf shaped uh, silhouettes high in the sky. But what actually ends up happening is that those feathers are binding. And if you if you do it just right and you press those wing feathers out just right, you'll actually find that they not only bind, but you'll actually see that the rachis warps out of shape and instead of actually kind of curving back, say like this is the right this is the right wing of a swift and the feathers are going off the wing like this, they'll actually have a curve that kind of swings back towards the body, but when they actually are swinging that wing out and those feathers are binding on each other and their, their surface area is expanding, there's so much tension that you actually see the rachis will actually straighten out or even turn forward on the wing. And that's where you end up with a swift that will have, instead of 
the knife-like shape, of the blade-like shape, will actually have kind of a bow and a leaf shape on the wing. This is especially true of the Kaitura Swiss, like your chimney Swiss and your, and your Vox Swiss.